Was there any other event in history that captured the world the way that World War II was able to? Was there any other time in history when a 17-year-old kid from West Virginia would have lied to the United States Navy in order to enlist and support his country? Everyone in America and across the world became captivated in national pride during the 1940s, and many like James Daly Cole risked all they had in order to protect our nation in World War II. James was my grandfather, my father's father, and he was that young kid from West Virginia who lied about his age to ensure he'd be able to protect our nation. He enlisted with his brother Bobby, who joined the Army. Both brothers were sent in separate directions across the country to train for their separate missions in World War II. James's journey would take him across the country to the Pacific Theater, where he'd serve on the USS San Jacinto. In 1943, as he stood in Camden, New Jersey, the Independence-class light aircraft carrier rose above him with her 24 40mm guns and 22 20mm anti-aircraft weapons. Interestingly enough, the ship was launched on September 26, 1943. This is the same date as my birthday would be, 53 years later. The San Jacinto was a well-fortified ship that was commissioned to sail directly for the Marshall Islands, located far away from the mainland of Japan. She was designated to protect her sister ships, which included the infamous USS Enterprise. As James spent 18 months at sea, he worked diligently repairing the mechanical computer on the anti-aircraft guns. He and the other crewmen participated in airstrikes that prepared the island of Saipan for U.S. invasion. Almost no days were routine. Destruction and explosions nearby rocked the ship, it seemed, every few minutes. The San Jacinto was directed as fleet cap protection for Task Force 5838 and ran almost non-stop to keep kamikazes from reaching the larger aircraft carriers. James Daly later described to his son, on more than one occasion, an incident where a Japanese kamikaze plane came within inches of crashing into the ship's deck. In one specific incident, a kamikaze plane was coming for the deck of the San Jacinto, and the anti-aircraft gunners fired ceaselessly against the incoming aircraft. James noticed that the pilot of the Japanese aircraft was alive until just moments before it narrowly missed the San Jacinto's deck. An incident like this would have endangered the entire crew and possibly sunk the carrier. There were many near disasters such as this involving kamikaze planes. In one instance, James was struck by a shard of fuselage from a Japanese Zero and he was able to bring it home as a reminder of how blessed each crew member was every day they survived at sea. After providing support for the invasion of Saipan, San Jacinto headed into her most infamous battle yet. On June 19th, the Japanese launched a response to the invasion of Saipan, which included the launch of 400-plus planes toward the Marianas. This day became known to American servicemen as the Marianas Turkey Shoot, where more than 300-plus enemy planes were downed in the water. James and his other crew members spent that day feverishly working to launch, retrieve, and rearm planes so that they may return to fighting. That evening, Admiral Mitzer directed that all carriers would set up a night recovery for the returning of all planes and turn on all the lights so the planes could land. This process was extremely dangerous. In all the chaos, the Japanese Zero actually attempted to land on the deck of the San Jacinto, but was immediately waved off because the landing signal officer realized the hook was not down and it was the wrong aircraft. San Jacinto followed the advancing American fleet through the Pacific across many islands in the infamous island hopping campaign. She provided support during many missions including strikes against Okinawa, providing support at Leyte, and eventually sailing to Tokyo Bay to be present for the formal Japanese surrender on September 2, 1945. She had survived World War II with only minor damage and was able to stand proud at one of the most infamous days in world history. My grandfather was there in Tokyo Bay as the surrender was signed, and afterward the San Jacinto traveled back to Nas Alameda, California. James signed up for several more years in the Navy and was then transferred to various other ships as he completed his career. The USS San Jacinto was awarded the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal and received five battle stars, and my grandfather left the Pacific Theater with the pride that he had contributed as much as a young man could in order to help our country. As he returned home to West Virginia, 
Years later, he and his brother Bobby were able to help their large family buy land in Bat Creek Valley. Eventually, he bought a plot of the land off of his family, where he raised his twin children, my father, James Luke, and my aunt, Rebecca Faith. Until he passed away in March of 2001, he spent his time passing on his knowledge about working hard throughout one's entire life and his love of family and God. Today, being 14 years since he passed away from stroke complications, I think about him more than ever. As his granddaughter, I look at his sacrifice to risk his own life in order to protect so many, including my future, and I am filled with an overwhelming amount of pride and humility. The men who risk their lives, including my grandfather and great uncle, did not live without fear, but chose to ignore it because they believed in the future of our nation, something bigger than all of us.